welcome back to our science lab. Today's experiment can be quite messy. It's good to do this one over the sink really, but so that you can see, I've just brought some towels. This is what you need. You need an empty plastic bottle like a lemonade or a squash bottle. You need some vinegar. You need some bicarbonate of soda and one or two balloons. This is what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to put the vinegar into the bottle, perhaps about halfway. Right, we'll try that. Next, we're going to put some bicarbonate of soda into a balloon. I'm going to use a funnel to fill it because that will make it a bit easier. If you don't have a funnel, maybe just a friend can help you. So I've put my balloon on the bottom of the funnel and I'm just going to tip some bicarbonate of soda into the balloon. And it's just going through there into my balloon. Give it a bit of a shake. So I have got bicarbonate of soda in my balloon, vinegar in the bottle. So now this is a little bit tricky. You might need somebody to help you. I'm going to fasten the balloon onto the bottle. Can you see that? But I haven't let the bicarbonate of soda go into the vinegar, not yet. So here's the experiment. What do you think will happen when I tip the balloon up and the bicarb goes into the vinegar? Let's see what happens. So I'm going to hold that up like that. Let the bicarbonate of soda all fall into the bottle. I need to straighten my balloon a little bit. Can you see it's going through there? And watch what happens to the balloon. Wow! Can you see the balloon is beginning to blow up? Now, of course, sooner or later, it gets too much and all the froth goes into the balloon and it's going to explode, I think. Can you see? Can you see how much my balloon has inflated? Wow, that's amazing. Perhaps some of you have done experiments like this before in school. Perhaps you've made a volcano out of paper mache and painted it and then you've made it erupt by putting vinegar and bicarbonate of soda inside. And it comes out, doesn't it? It looks a bit like the molten lava. And why does this happen? Well, I'm sure some of you will know that when the bicarbonate of soda reacts with the vinegar, it produces a gas and that gas is called carbon dioxide. It's the gas that we breathe out when we breathe. It's the gas that you get in fizzy drinks as well, like Coke and lemonade. And that carbon dioxide was what managed to inflate our balloon. And over time, that would eventually go down. And in today's story, the character has lots of ups and downs in his life. Have you ever said something like this, maybe to your parents? It's just not fair. Why is that happening? Why can't I do whatever it is you want to do? And sometimes we feel like that, don't we? Things are just not fair. There's a book in the Bible named after a character called Job. And many, many bad things happen to Job. And Job must have felt it's just not fair many, many times. Let's hear his story. Job was a wealthy man. He owned 7,000 sheep, 
3,000 camels, 500 pairs of oxen and 500 donkeys. Many servants worked for him and he was considered to be the greatest man among all those living in the area. Job had a wife, seven sons and three daughters. He was a good, blameless and upright man who avoided evil and regularly made offerings to God for himself and his family. One day, God's enemy, Satan, appeared before God. Have you seen my servant Job? God asked him. There's no one like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Satan replied that if Job's riches and his comforts and his family were taken from him, then he would curse God. So God allowed Job to be tested and gave Satan permission to take away everything that Job had, but not to harm Job himself. One day, a messenger arrived to tell Job that the enemies had attacked, killed his servants and stolen his cattle and donkeys. While he was speaking, another messenger arrived to say the fire had fallen and burnt up all his sheep. Then a third messenger arrived to break more bad, me bad news. Three raiding parties had made off with Job's camels. And then a fourth messenger told him that his children had been feasting indoors in the house when a strong wind swept in from the desert. The house collapsed on them and they were all killed. Job was devastated. He got up, tore his robe, shaved his head, and then he fell to the ground in worship. He refused to blame God for his suffering and sin. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Satan appeared before God again. God asked him, have you seen my blameless servant Job? He still maintains his integrity though you have inflicted all kinds of disasters on him. But Satan said, if Job is made ill himself, then he will curse God. So God allowed Job to be tested even more, but he wouldn't be killed. Satan went and caused Job to have painful sores all over his body. Job was in pain. He took a piece of broken pottery and scratched himself with it as he sat among the ashes. But he wouldn't curse God for his suffering. His wife was furious. She urged him to curse God and just die. Don't be foolish, Job replied. Shall we accept good from God, but not trouble? Job's three friends, Eliphaz, Bildad and Zophar, heard about Job's troubles. They set out to sympathise and comfort him. But they hardly recognised the man when they saw him. They wept and tore their robes and sat with Job for seven days and nights. Job's suffering was so great. Job began to question God. He asks why God had brought so much misery and pain on him. He complained about his lack of peace. Eliphaz told Job that it must be his fault. This must be God's punishment for something that Job has done. He asks Job to accept God's punishment. Job replied, saying he felt helpless and wanted to die. He's upset that Eliphaz thinks that God is punishing him for doing wrong, as it seemed so unfair. He knew that God was in control of everything, but didn't understand what was happening to him. Then Bildad spoke up. 
He too thought it was all Job's own fault. He told him to seek forgiveness from God and that God would rest restore his life. Then the third friend, Zophar, joined the discussion. He too accused Job of sinning. He said that if Job repented and asked for forgiveness, then God might save him. Job was upset with his friends. What miserable comforters you are, he exclaimed. He believed that God would realise that he was innocent. Job asked God why wicked people seemed to be allowed to live and why he was suffering when he'd done nothing wrong. The three friends stop arguing and leave Job on his own. Finally, God spoke from a whirlwind. God asked Job a long list of questions to show how little he knew about God's creation and his power. God explained to Job that he alone knew what would work for Job best. He alone had all the power. Finally, Job came to accept what God was saying. He felt unworthy and ashamed. He asked God for forgiveness and knew how great God was. His suffering came to an end. God was angry with the three friends for giving such poor advice and not being where Job wanted them to be, not helping him like they should have. They made an offering to God. Job begged for forgiveness for his friends and God forgave them. Job recovered from his illness and in time God blessed him even more than he had before. He had more children, more sons, more daughters and even more animals than he'd ever had in the first place. God had shown that he loved Job more than anything. Job was a faithful man who trusted God, but he just couldn't understand why so many bad things were happening. And he started to complain a lot to God and I don't blame him, do you? I think I'd have complained too. And what use were his friends? His friends were not at all helpful, were they? We don't need friends like that. We need friends who can help and encourage us. Here's a verse from the Bible in a book called Proverbs, which is full of wise sayings. This is what it says. Singing to a person who is depressed is like taking off his clothes on a cold day or like rubbing salt in a wound. It's a bit of a funny saying, isn't it? But it's really saying that we need to be good friends to each other. If we have a friend who's feeling miserable or sad or, or grumpy about something, we need to try and help them to feel better, to cheer them up, to encourage them. It's no use saying, well, it's all your own fault. Yeah, we told you that would happen. That's not being a good friend, is it? And Job's friends were not great. But ultimately, Job knew that he would be able to trust God. And even though he went through bad times where he turned away from God, in the end, he knew that God was always with him and had a perfect plan for him. And Christians believe that God still has a perfect plan for each of us. Yes, things will not go always the way we want them, but we know that all things work for God's purpose in our lives if we trust him. Let's pray. Father God, we do pray for people who are in difficulties. We pray for people who are ill or sad or lonely. 
Please help us to be good friends to encourage and to cheer people. And thank you that you promise to know the best for us and to be with us whatever we go through.